you're a robot. I mean, you're on a robot, obviously. Uh, the cool thing is, nowadays you can just build yourself a full six-axis robot for less than what my first 3D printer cost me. Granted, that was a long time ago and parts were a lot more expensive back then, but still, for a bit over 2,000 bucks and two weekends spent on assembly and tuning, this could be yours. This is the AR4 Mark III with about 600 millimeters of reach, two kilograms of payload capacity, a fully programmable software package and you know plenty of interfaces to attach your own tools and hook up your own inputs and outputs this is meant to be you know the next step up from those cheap rc servo robots in something that is actually useful to build the air 4 we're going to need some printed parts and for that we're going to use today's sponsor the Pio Poly Magneto X. Mine now wears the optional full enclosure, which is fantastic for using the full 400 by 300 by 300 millimeter build volume, even with warp happy high performance materials. To achieve its crazy printing speeds, the Magneto X skips belts and stepper motors and goes right to closed loop linear brushless motors for X and Y and comes stock with the Lancer extruder and a high flow wear resistant hardened for up to 70 cubic millimeters of filament added to your print every second. The Magneto X runs standard customizable clipper firmware and you can get it for $400 off all throughout July at the link below. To make life easier for me, I bought the full robot kit from Chris Annan, which includes the electronics and mechanical parts. You get a teensy to control it all, an adapter board and a whole bunch of switches, connectors and cables. The mechanical parts have the belts, pulleys, fasteners, and surprisingly beefy bearings, but I also ordered the aluminum parts that make up the mechanical structure of the machine. You can choose to 3D print almost all of these parts from plastic, and while that will reduce the overall cost and weight of the robot, it will also make for a less rigid setup. And these parts are basically all billet machined, and for that I think they are sold at a very fair price. I mean, nice machine parts like this are just an absolute joy to look at. You still need to print some parts yourself. Enclosures, covers, those sort of things that just don't make sense to machine them. Many of them are fairly large, but you can also print these as split variants if your printer is not quite big enough. Though none of these are particularly optimized for 3D printing, so supports and at least somewhat decent print profiles are a must. And then these are absolutely printable unless your tree sports all decide to come loose from the bed. I also bought the basic servo gripper kit. Uh, obviously for most real applications, you're gonna have a custom tool head on the machine, but I thought I should just get you know something as a starting point for learning how the machine works and how the tool head gets interfaced with. So you know I could use this to demonstrate the machine straight away. Lastly, and this is a part that you cannot buy directly from Anon Robotics, the motors and drivers. Uh, the AR4 uses good old stepper motors instead of servos, which compared to you know geared brushless motors make for a simpler setup, um, but also for somewhat larger motors to get the same power and torque. These parts are directly available as a kit from Stepper Online in China and they're a bit of a specialized variant as they use standard planetary gearboxes but are supposedly tuned for extra low backlash. Backlash obviously is something that will mess with any motion system but especially when you're trying to precisely position something you want to get it as low as possible. One thing I didn't expect was for all these motors to have encoders straight built into them. Um, in this case, these allow the electronics to detect when a motor isn't moving exactly as it's instructed. The firmware doesn't actually correct for skipped steps, but at least it can catch it. So that should be all the parts that I need. Let's get started with the build. Of course, there's a build manual. I would be completely lost without it. It's 400 pages long though. Thankfully, a lot of that is because it's super detailed, but there's also lots of time spent on explaining the wiring and making sure you don't switch anything around there. The manual does recommend tinning wires that go into screw terminals, which will work for a year or two, but I've had tinned wires go completely loose in these terminals, and that's obviously not a great thing for reliability. The terminals on the machine are all okay for bare stranded wire, so just be careful you don't splay them out and you'll be fine without any tinning. We're starting to build at the bottom with the base. Uh, for all the 3D printed parts, the holes get drilled out to size, some of them get tapped because everything in here is functional. 
There is zero design or decor on this machine anywhere. Almost all of the hardware on here is metric, which is great. The connectors are USB-C, love to see it. The wiring is still American Wiregate, but that's fine. And for the 3D printed part, this isn't a project that is using 3D printing, you know, for 3D printing's sake. It just happened to be the right solution for the challenge at hand, and that's quite refreshing to see. Building the AR4 means constantly jumping between mechanical, electrical, and sort of light organizing work. After getting the drivers mounted, you immediately get to assemble the main turret bearings, uh, which are enormous for the size robot that we're building. These are all slipping into place a little bit too easily, and they could probably use some Loctite to keep them from spinning in their seats and on the shaft. I may need to take it apart again though, so I'm not locking anything into place yet. Because of that, there is noticeable play in the bearings at this point, but I'm hoping that tightening up these roller bearings later will take care of that. The parts that mount to the main spindle, these bits down here, are absolute chonkers as well. It seems like they somewhat deviate from the manual, but with these holes just not being quite deep enough, I can just grab some longer screws and attach them that way. Then everything just gets attached to everything. There's grub screws that preload the bearing assembly, and with that on, we can grab the first motor, uh, add the key and pulley, and finally install and tension the first belt with two more grub screws. So next up is going to be a whole bunch of wiring, but that is not very exciting to watch. So we're going to use the magic of editing and go like this, and that's all done. That was some tight work. This newest generation of AR4 packs the electronics straight onto the robot instead of in a separate box that's attached with wiring and stuff. Um, but when you have to wire every connection up by hand in here, you know, a, a little bit extra space in here would have been nice. The mechanical assembly certainly makes quite liberal use of the components. For the joint 2 motor, that's the big guy down here, you actually take the gearbox apart, slide the mounting hardware over the opposite side of the mounting face, and then align everything back up and reassemble it. Maybe a split clamp would be nice here to save you from taking everything apart. Uh, I did manage to mount the first arm backwards, but that's an easy fix. Uh, with the motor convinced into place, I did notice that the gearbox I just took apart uh, was running quite unsmooth, almost like it was misaligned. So I took it all apart again, reseated both stages of the gearbox, made sure the gears were installed in the correct orientations, but after all that it still ran just as poorly as before, maybe even a bit worse. But interestingly, as soon as everything got tightened up, it started to run smoothly, so that's good. A lot of the building process is wiring. You get to solder and extend wires, route and splice and sleeve cables left and right. Everything is hardwired, there's no connectors on here anywhere, which I disagree with. Um, and since the motors are already, you know, somewhat custom versions made specifically for the AR4, it should be possible to get them made with the correct wire lengths instead of immediately having to cut off the factory wiring and soldering on extensions. I'm sure it's better than having to solder plugs and, you know, making connection wires like in the earlier versions where that box was still separate. Maybe in a future revision we may start seeing these with longer wires from the factory and maybe even plugs on them. I think at this point you've seen the basic gist of the mechanical assembly process, so I'm gonna shut up now and let you enjoy the rest of the build. And we're done. At this point, there is a sequence of tasks that you get to do to get the robot arm running. You check that the motors work, you check the encoders, 
make sure the end stops all work. Well, I put this motor on the wrong way. This connector should be facing that way. And that really isn't an issue for functionality, but now this end stop screw is also clocked 90 degrees the wrong way, so it can never get to its home position. Now to fix that, I would need to take this ring off, but because this also holds the bearings, which are tensioned down here, I would also need to get to this, which means I need to take off that, which means I need to take off this cover and undo the entire lead screw linear axis conversion assembly. And that's, a, that's like the most involved part of the entire robot. So I think I'm just gonna cheat. And with that all fixed, you calibrate the end stop offset by measuring the actual angles it parks at. And after that, we can start programming some routines. Now, I've only barely scratched the surface of the software that Chris custom made for the AR robots, but it's actually very capable. The basic instructions are somewhat similar to the G code that you would run on a 3D printer, but it can actually do a lot more than that. You can program loops. Uh, you can do incremental offsets. For example, if you want to stack things on top of each other, uh, you can add if then checks with external signals that you attach to either the TNC or the Arduino Nano. Uh, you can add more servos or digital outputs. There's also the option to read instructions from a serial port. And there's even camera based options recognition built into the software. It's quite impressive and I found it really easy to learn just by playing around with its features. You know, I love learning things when there's direct visual haptic feedback happening. So with 10 minutes of experimenting, I got it to pick up some pliers, present them and drop them in a different spot. Very nice. You may have noticed that there is a good amount of wobble in the movement. This arm is neither accurate nor precise, rigid or smooth. There is a claim of 0.2 millimeters repeatability, but considering that the end stops only get within about a degree or so every time it calibrates after powering on, that's a bit of a stretch. Speaking of stretchy, four of these axes use relatively coarse belts and because they have to go around relatively small pulleys, without being afraid to over tighten uh, the belts and, and ruin the gearbox output, I couldn't get them tensioned enough to where they wouldn't introduce, you know, that significant amount of flex and elasticity to the motion. The motors themselves, and this is entirely on OMC Stepper Online, they also don't meet the promised 15 arc minutes, aka 0.25 degrees of backlash. I easily measured, you know, this axis, for example, is direct drive. Um, I easily measured, you know, a degree or more of backlash on almost every motor. And lastly, the way that some of these structural and bearing assemblies are designed with a lot of these joints using a single tapered roller bearing and then an axial thrust bearing uh, to just tension that, that is just not a combination that can resist any torque from the axis twisting like that, for example. And when the robot is standing still, you can feel that there is a good amount of elasticity in the bearing assembly itself, even when it's tightened up. There are also some obvious issues uh, like needle bearings riding on aluminum shafts in here, um, grub screws clamping down radially on a, a bearing race, uh, you know, mating parts together with a screw that has to pass through two threaded sections in both parts that aren't clocked correctly, maybe take the mechanical design of the AR arm with a grain of salt. It gets the job done creatively. It's just not textbook engineering material. And you know, this project does deserve a bit of slack. It's literally just one guy doing mechanical, firmware and software who also manages to buy kits with the structural and electrical components. I couldn't imagine handling all those tasks at the same time. So Chris definitely deserves a hefty amount of praise for managing all those things at once. So let's move on and get some more stuff done. One of the applications I was thinking of was grabbing printer beds off the machine and then replacing them with fresh ones, but that's right at the edge of the capabilities of both the arm and myself. So let's start a little simpler and get a camera on here. Uh, this is what got me interested in robot arms in the first place. Specifically, I want to create those smooth orbiting shots around objects that are really hard to do any other way. And for that, I can simply tell the robot that, you know, the center of its tool is not right here, but actually 300 millimeters out, for example. So I set the tool offset to 300 millimeters. Now, if I use the tool rotate commands, it will automatically keep it centered at that exact perfect distance. So with that, we get this.
There's also spline moves, which interpolate a path along multiple points. Remember that nerf shot I rendered on the tree supports video? That was a spline path. Basically, as long as the camera and the arm fit, I can now recreate that in real life. But in this footage, you can still see a bit of wobble going on, and that is already after stabilizing in Resolve. Straight out of the camera, which has optical image stabilization built in, there is a lot more shaking going on, and you can visibly see that on the robot as well. Like right here, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's quite jerky. Also, I need to figure out how to actually use the arc move and linear move commands, because when I tried them, the robot would take off in the exact opposite direction that I told it, and would eventually crash. Though, I do blame that on me not knowing the software well enough. So, what do you think? How should I put the robot arm to best use? You can actually expand this thing by putting the entire base on a track so it can move left and right, which makes it easier to smoothly move the tool because it can avoid those positions where it has to twist all its axes just to move the tool in the exact right position you want it in. I also now sort of want to build a camera-specific arm, one that is built to be smooth and large, but not necessarily fast or strong. There are a lot of ways that I could take this project, so let me know in the comments below what you would like to see. If you're interested in getting more details about the AR4 robot platform, I've linked the website and YouTube channel below where Chris walks you through the build, uh, the software, and the logic behind the arm. It's a very good watch, so do check that out. And lastly, sorry this video took so long to get out. After open source, I was down with the sauce sickness for a while, so that delayed everything a bit more than I would have liked. As always, thank you to everyone who's supporting the channel. That genuinely means a lot to me. Thank you all for watching, keep on making, and I'll see you in the next one.